Contentment is not just a single person's issue. There are people who are married that are discontent for various reasons. It doesn't matter what your relationship status is. Discontentment is a matter of the heart. Hey everybody, welcome back to Singles Walking in Purpose. My name is Sarah and the goal of this channel is to equip and encourage singles to be the bride of Christ. And if you are new here, welcome. And if you're not, welcome back. Make sure that you are subscribed so that you don't miss any other videos just like this one. So please don't think that just because I got a man, here I come talking about contentment. No. <laughs> if you have been watching and rolling with me for a while, then you know that contentment was one of my greatest struggles over the years, mainly regarding um, just kind of my career path and just the overall direction of my life and in regards to my relationship status. I truly believe that if I just got a man that I could finally be happy and finally have joy and just be settled and just have peace. I thought that if I could just get a job that I actually enjoyed and made decent money, that I would actually be happy. I was placing my hope in things and in people versus in the Lord. In 2022, when I got laid off my job, I believe the Holy Spirit downloaded this idea to do a 30 days to contentment challenge. Because I was thinking, I'm like, if people can do a 30 day fitness and nutrition challenge or a 30 day challenge to do whatever, why can't I do a 30 day challenge for contentment? So I set my sails on a 30 day contentment journey. And I believed in faith that God would meet me in those 30 days. And that after those 30 days that I would no longer be marked by discontentment. I did go a little bit over those 30 days because I just wanted a little bit more, but God was so faithful and he met me during that time. And just because I'm doing this video does not mean that I have arrived or that I have it all together and that I'm just the most content person in the world and I no longer struggle with discontentment. There are still things that the Lord is teaching me in ways in which the Lord is stretching me and causing me to grow to greater levels of contentment. So just for this video, I really just wanna teach you what the Lord has taught me over the years regarding contentment. And whether you're single or married, I pray that the Lord will minister to you and help you grow in your contentment as well. So the first thing I wanna kinda of talk about today are causes of discontentment. So one of the main reasons I believe many of us have experienced discontentment is due to unmet desires and expectations. I thought that if I could just get a job or if I could just have an, a, a, a career path or if I could just make this amount of money or if I could just get a man, then I could be content. And when God did not move <laughs> in those areas, I became discontent because I had unmet desires and unmet expectations. We become discontent when God doesn't move how we want him to move and when we want him to move. And let me just also just put out there that our dissatisfaction and our discontentment is not gonna make God move any faster. It's not our complaining, our grumbling, us being upset, us kicking and screaming, basically having a temper tantrum, might I add, is not gonna make God move any faster. In fact, it really reveals our heart and it shows us where our heart really is. And in all honesty, that is something we should praise God for. The fact that he does not move until it is time. Because if the Lord had brought me a man in my 20s like I really wanted him to, I would not have been prepared and neither would Ja'Cory. We would not have been in the position that we are now to be able to walk and move forward in the purpose that God has for us. I'm so glad. <laughs> God did not do it a second before he was supposed to. I came to realize that God would always intentionally put me in still now. <laughs> God will put me in situations and circumstances that make me uncomfortable, that I don't necessarily care for on purpose just to teach me how to rely on him to teach me that I need to be satisfied in him and in not in my circumstances. We cannot depend on our circumstances to make us content, right? Because they are always changing from season to season as they should. So our hope must be in the one that is constant, which is Christ, so that when things change, we're not all to pieces. So in 22, when I got laid off and I realized that God intentionally placed me at that job to teach me how to be content and how to be satisfied in him, I knew that he would not move me until I learned how to be content in him. I knew that he, he basically had me sitting still. 
<laughs> so that I had no choice but to look to where the heels from where my help came from because my circumstances could not okay could not <laughs> give me joy they could not give me peace I could not be satisfied in my circumstances and I truly do believe that it is the Lord's desire for all of us to be satisfied in him and in him alone because he's the bread of life right he's the one that wants to quench our thirst and to satisfy that hunger that we have right the Bible tells us that those who hunger and thirst for righteousness will be satisfied he wants to be the one that satisfies us and he doesn't want us looking elsewhere for satisfaction contentment does not mean that your circumstances are perfect and that your circumstances are exactly how you want them contentment means that i have placed my faith and my trust and my hope in the one who is constant the one who will never change the one that will never leave me nor forsake me contentment means that i am literally satisfied in him him being Jesus Christ, the one who died on the cross for me, the one who gave me his Holy Spirit. And this does not mean that you cannot be excited in times that are, are exciting. Like I'm getting married in a few months. That's exciting. And I should bask in it, right? That doesn't mean that I place my hope and my trust in this. Because what happens when the wedding is over? That I'm going to be upset? No, I, I enjoyed this that season. Now I get to enjoy the new season that I get to walk in with its new challenges, with its new things that the Lord is gonna teach me in that season. And something else we have to remember is that God doesn't owe us anything. <laughs> he doesn't owe us anything. Him going to the cross, he already has done more than enough for us, right? Just because God can do something doesn't mean that he will or that he has to. We really have this entitlement spirit that we deserve X, Y, and Z. We deserve what we desire because we, we've we been faithful. But because of his kindness and his love, he does things for us, for his good pleasure, for his glory, right? In his perfect timing. We were created by God and for God. We have to remember that our life is not even our own and that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are higher and better than our thoughts. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. He's a good gift giver but he gives good gifts for his purpose. When it's gonna bring him glory, not to fulfill the earthly and the selfish desires of our hearts. Yes, the Bible, uh, people love to quote, well, God's, the Bible says God will give me the desires of my heart, but they fail to read the whole scripture. When you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. When you delight yourself in the Lord, his desires become your desires everything starts to shift. What you used to want, you don't want anymore. Or when you really delight yourself in the Lord, he begins to satisfy you. And whatever he wants for you, that's what you want. And that's, and when he wants it for you, that's when you want it. You're able to freely walk into a new season and enjoy it. Not regretting anything you didn't do in the last season. Like, don't think God is holding out on you. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. So if you're walking uprightly and he hasn't brought something to you, know that it's not good for you right now. What he has in your life is good for you right now. So you can trust and believe and rest in that. Rest on the promises of God, not on our desires. Another thing that kind of goes with the unmet desires and expectations is comparison. You see what other people have and you see what you don't have and now you want what they have and think that that's gonna make you happy. And then you become unhappy with your season and with what the Lord has given you right now with your portion. The thing is just because the Lord blessed Susie with that promotion doesn't mean that it's your season for a promotion. The Lord still has a purpose for you right where you are. And let me just say a discontent heart is never satisfied because you always want more. What you have is never enough. You just keep going from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. And you're just never satisfied. And even in that, you can see how that discontentment can lead to other sins, such as jealousy, envy, and idolatry, which is my next point. One of the reasons we are discontent is because we have idols in our heart and we want something or someone more than we want God. And of course, we would never admit it. But our actions reveal what's really in our hearts. There was definitely a time 
where I wanted a romantic relationship more than I wanted Christ, just to be honest. Is the real reason why you don't seek your satisfaction in the Lord because you really want something else more than him? You don't want Christ to satisfy you because I want that man more than I want Christ. I want that job more than I want Christ. I want that car more than I want Christ. And I want to ask you, what are you craving? Do you want it more than Christ? Jesus said, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be satisfied. Maybe the reason you're not satisfied is because you're hungry and thirsty for the wrong things. You're pursuing the wrong things. You're chasing after the wrong things. David said, one thing that I have desired of the Lord and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The thing that we desire is the thing that we chase after. It's the thing that we pursue. Is it the Lord or is it things or other people? Another cause of discontentment could be unbelief. Do you truly believe that God can and will satisfy you? Do you believe that he is able? Is there any level of unbelief? What is truly holding you back from believing that God is able to quench your thirst and satisfy that hunger that you have and fill that void in your heart? Discontentment not only reveals the idols in our heart, but it truly reveals where we lack faith in the Lord. And this doesn't mean that you have no faith, but it could mean that you have little faith. And the Lord is trying to increase your faith to believe that he is who he says that he is and that he will do what he says that he will do. So with this, I really want you to, 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 to think and to examine yourself and to think what is really the root cause of my discontentment? It's not just because you're still at this job or because you're still single. That's just the fruit. Let's dig and get to the root and, and seek the Lord and see why am I truly discontent? It's really a deeper heart issue that you have to seek the Lord about. I remember the Lord revealing to me that the reason I desired marriage so much was because I wanted a man to fill the void that my father never filled. Literally, once the Lord gave me that revelation, it literally changed everything. It literally freed me <laughs> to walk in contentment and to seek the Lord in that area and to see how the enemy has tricked me and how the enemy has played a role in my contentment. That revelation broke a chain that I didn't even know was there. It's like it, it, it removed a barrier or a wall that was standing between me and the Lord and allowed me to draw even closer to him than I ever had before and to truly find satisfaction and contentment and peace and joy in him. The next point, why is this so important? This is so important and I really believe that the Lord wanted me to talk about this in, in particular. First and foremost, Christ must be our highest goal. Knowing and being known by the creator of the universe, the lover of our souls, the one who died and rose again for us, he must be supreme in our hearts and our minds. I want to read Philippians 3 verses 7 through 9. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ the righteousness from God that depends on faith. And this goes right back to the idolatry piece. What have we put above being known by God and knowing him? Paul said, I count everything as rubbish. Whatever gain he had, he counted it as a loss. Because what does it gain? What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Let me tell you, there's no job, no car, no house, no man worth Hearing, depart from me, I never knew you. Christ must be number one in our lives. This is why this is so important. Christ wants us to seek him for everything. The peace that you're lacking is found in Christ. The joy that you're lacking is found in Christ. And I also want to read Hebrews 1 and 2. It tells us to lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith, 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Listen, discontentment is a weight, and it can be a sin if not checked, that, that hinders us from running the race that God has set before us well, because we're so focused on everything and everyone else that we can't even look to Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith. Because Satan wants us so focused on what we don't have or what we want or what everybody else has that we can't even be focused on what the Lord has set before us, that we can't even run our race well because we have so much baggage. Ooh, Jesus, discontentment is baggage. So those are the two reasons why I believe that the Lord wants us to deal with this. Now we've talked about some causes of discontentment. Let's talk about how to walk in contentment. I got scriptures for y'all, okay? I don't just be talking out the side of my neck. <laughs> everything, I try for everything that I do to be rooted in the word of God. I wanna read Philippians 4. If you didn't see it coming, you should have seen it coming. Gotta talk about Paul when you're talking about contentment, right? I wanna read Philippians 4. Let's start at, let's, let's start at verse 10. He said, I rejoice in the Lord greatly. Let's start there. Let's stop right there for a moment. Rejoice in the Lord. And he said that multiple times, but we are to rejoice in the Lord, not our circumstances. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. He can do all things. He could be poor. He could be rich. He could be content no matter where he found himself. In jail, not in jail. Hungry, plenty of food to choose from. And it is in Christ where he can do all that. Only in Christ, not in his circumstances. Even though the book of Philippians is kind of considered the book of joy. I also want to read a few more passages that talks about contentment. Hebrews 13 and 5. Keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That he being Jesus, of course. I also want to read 1 Timothy 6 six through 10, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evils. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. So the first way that you can walk in contentment is gratitude. That might surprise you a little bit, but let me tell you, instead of focusing on what you don't have, focus on who you have and what he has given you. Rejoice in the Lord, right? And of course, there are so many scriptures that talk about rejoicing in the Lord and being grateful and being thankful. There are a ton of scriptures as the enemy is so sneaky and discontentment is one of his tricks in an attempt to get you to, to kill, steal and destroy. Right. He wants to steal your joy. He wants to destroy your witness. Right. He that's his job. He is the father of lies. He wants you to think that God has forgotten about you, that he's holding out on you and that you would be so much happier if you had X, Y and Z. He just wants you to focus on your desires more than the Lord. But when you are intentional and being grateful, it really shifts your perspective and it gives you the perspective and the peace of Christ. Because let me tell you, if discontentment goes unchecked, it most certainly will lead to complaining to start. <laughs> when you're discontent, you'd certainly find yourself complaining. Guilty, okay? But not only does it lead to complaining, but it can easily lead to depression. Again, it can lead to jealousy. It can lead to envy. It can lead to a lack of faith, a lack of joy. When you're discontent, you lack joy, period. 
period. You can't be discontent and have the joy of the Lord. But when you're intentional in setting your mind on things above and fixing your thoughts on things that are pure and lovely and true and honorable and excellent and worthy of praise, worthy of praise, which is Jesus. Listen, you can't be discontent long because when you remember, oh my gosh, all that God has done for you, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, right? When you think about those things, your soul has no choice but to cry out, hallelujah. God, thank you first and foremost for saving me. And thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me, Lord. The things that I counted as small, thank you for providing for me. The second one is to abide in Christ. I want to read John 6, 35. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. The thing for this verse is that you have to come to Jesus. You can't, you can't receive the satisfaction that only Christ can give you if you're not coming to him. You have to seek his presence. You have to abide in him and not everything and everyone else. God is a gentleman. He's never going to force himself on you. You have to come. You have to present yourself and sit at the feet of Jesus. And the thing with coming to Christ, that means that you are leaving everything else behind. My old ways of thinking, the, the, the things that I used to place my hope and my trust in, the things that I used to idolize, I'm leaving that. And I'm going to come to you, Lord. When you come to the Lord, you're coming in faith that you truly believe that he's going to satisfy you, that he is who he says that he is and that he will do what he says that he will do. And you recognize that everything else that you've placed your faith in before was not it. The psalmist said, in your presence, there is fullness of joy and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And even in John 15, he let us know that when we abide in him, that his joy will be, his joy will be complete in us. It'll be full in us. But the thing is, you can't, I say this all the time, you cannot have the promises of God outside of the presence of God. If you want his peace, you want his joy, you want his love, his forgiveness, his kindness, his grace, you have to come to him. It's only found in him, not outside of him. Because the thing is, we really sell ourselves short when we try to find the promises of God outside of him. There is fullness of joy, right? Not a little bit of joy. The fullness of the Father's joy, perfect, complete joy in his presence. Again, we got to remember that Satan is the father of lies. He wants us to think that there's fullness of joy in that other man's bed. He wants us to think that there's fullness of joy at the bottom of a bottle. And it's not. It's not. The Bible is true. <laughs> the word works when we work it, which is actually the next point. You got to speak the word. Stir yourself up in the Lord. Because the thing is, you have to be mindful of the words that come out of your mouth. Especially when you're struggling with discontentment, when you see the enemy rearing his ugly head, instead of agreeing with what he's saying, you need to agree with what the Lord says and speak his words. His word that gives life. His word that brings joy, that brings peace, right? Because you're in his presence. And you speaking the word is you setting your mind on things above. It's fixing your thoughts on things that are pure and lovely, and true, honorable and excellent and worthy of praise. And the thing is, you have to be intentional. You cannot be lackadaisical and expect it to happen by osmosis. you got to take captive those thoughts that try to present themselves against the knowledge of Christ and make them obedient to his word. And this point kind of encompasses the last two. It's you abiding and it's you being grateful because it's going to cause you, it's going to cause gratitude. When you read and see that the Lord is your shepherd and you shall not want, that you have everything that you need, that though he cares for the birds of the air and the flowers of the field, then how much more will he take care of you? That, that you can cast your cares on him because he cares for you. When, you. when you read the word, you're going to be so filled with gratitude for who he is and for who you are in him and how he's taken care of you. And the thing is, it fuels your faith. Yes, you may want a new job, but it fuels your faith to know that he's going to move in his perfect way, in his perfect timing. And you're reminded that every that he allows everything to work together for the good of them that love him and are called according to his purpose. So it makes you excited to see what he's going to do and how he's going to do it. Because he is still the God of Ephesians 3 and 20. 
He can still do exceedingly and abundantly above anything that we could ever ask or think. He's still God. He's still good. He's still faithful. No matter what our circumstances look like, he doesn't change. He is constant, right? So that, that should fuel your faith. So don't allow your desires and your emotions and your feelings to drive you, but speak God's word and allow your faith to arise. The next point is to surrender. You cannot be content and be satisfied in him without fully surrendering everything to him. I thought that if I gave the Lord my desire for marriage, then I would never get married. I really did, I'm not gonna lie. I thought that if I gave him my desires, then, then he would keep them and toss them off to the side. But let me tell you, once I got to the root of my discontentment, it was so much easier for me to give the Lord my desires, to surrender my desires to him and to receive his contentment, his satisfaction, his peace and his joy in return. I truly got to the point where I didn't care if I got married. And it kind of scared me, <laughs> but I'm just being honest. I genuinely didn't care if I got married and, and I was okay with that. I was so content in the Lord. I truly was just so satisfied in him. I was literally out here living my absolute best life before Jacora came along and I'm still living my absolute best life. But now I get to walk it out with him. We have to remember we're the clay and he's the potter and that he can have his way with our lives. But we just have to get out of, we have to get out of God's way for him to be the God of Ephesians 3.20. Again, we sell ourselves short when we don't let God be God. So I really pray that this was a blessing and an encouragement to you. Cause like I said, there's still greater levels of contentment that the Lord is still trying to teach me. So the timing of this was perfect for me. I needed the reminder. Um, I really needed these reminders for myself in the season that I'm in. So let me know in the comment sections below, what are some ways that you have been able to walk out contentment? What have been some of the causes for your discontentment? I would love to see them in the comments below and I believe that they will also help those who will read them as well if you're willing to share. So make sure that you like this video, that you share it with someone that will be blessed by it and make sure that you subscribe for new videos every month just like this one. Until the next one, grace and peace.